Hey YouTube, so if you've just come from the previous video where we've done the intro, we're now going to take a look at Packer and we will take a look at the boot command mainly. So as you can see on the left hand side we have a command window where we've created a directory called Packer temp on the C drive and inside of there we've got the Packer binary which we downloaded and put into that, into that directory. We also have the JSON files directory which holds the JSON file which you can see on the right currently. There's also a directory which is created by Packer called Packer Cache. So you don't need to create that. Packer will create it for you as it does its run. So let's take a look at this boot command. That's this guy over here. So Packer gives us the ability to type commands into our windows as the machine boots up. We tell Packer that we have to wait for five seconds before it is able to type those commands in. Now Packer can't see what's going on in the machine, but as long as you give it enough time, then it'll just start to type away and do its thing for you. So these boot commands over here, you see there's an escape key, then there's a wait. Now the wait comes in three different flavors. You've got wait, which is one second, wait five, and wait 15. And they would suggest that they wait one, five, and 15 seconds. You can see that we are going to do a welcome to Packer as a string that it types in and then we're going to press enter. So it's perfectly reasonable to say that this will not work, but it will bring the machine up and start typing the commands. So you will get an idea of what Packer is going to do for us. Now there's a couple other things that we absolutely have and this JSON file is the minimum that you need to actually get your Packer run running. So if you wanted to copy this down, you can see it now on the screen. Feel free to pause and just make a copy of it and you can also get your machine up and running. So let's quickly go through what we've got over here. So we've got the ISO URL and you can see that what I've done is I've said that it's going to be a file. That means that I've actually put the file on my hard drive and we don't have to download it from the internet. We've also got a checksum over here and that checksum allows us to download the file and make sure that we've got the correct file. Now why would we need a checksum if we've got the file on our disk? The reason we do that is because the file, the ISO URL over here is actually a full-fledged URL. You could, if you wanted to, download this from a FTP site or an HTTP hosting site, which means that you don't necessarily have to have the file on the machine that you're going to do the run on. You could store it on a file server or somewhere else on the internet or have a build server if you're going to use some sort of automated system to do this for you. We also have an output directory where we tell Packer where to put the machine when it's done creating it, which we have specified over here. The other things are pretty much self-explanatory, so I'm not really going to cover them. If you do need to take a look at the documentation, feel free to take a look at the Packer documentation, which is actually really useful. which can be found at Packer.io, and then just click on Docs. And you can see there's quite a lot in there. So if you wanted to take a look at the boot command, you want to come down to the Builder section, Virtual Box, and then ISO. And then right down at the bottom of the page, they give you everything that you need to know about these things. So you can see there's a section there for boot commands. And you can see there is a ton of different commands that you can put in there, which is just pretty much everything that you can, that you need on your keyboard to put in there. And you can see I've probably made a mistake there, but it's actually wait 10, not wait 15. Okay, so let's see our Packer stuff in action. So Packer's got two commands that we're gonna expose the first time around. The first one is Packer validate, validate, like that. And then we just point it to a JSON file. And what we'll do, what that will do is check that our JSON file is syntactically correct. We'll make sure that everything we've got as an option is a valid option. The next one is going to be packer build. So packer build, and then the same JSON file again. And what this will do is actually get packer to boot the machine up in VirtualBox and then start the process which we've outlined over here with our boot command. 
So there's our machine booting up. You see we wait for our five seconds and then Packer starts to do the typing for us. So I'm not typing. There we go. So you can see it says, welcome to Packer. As we expected, it failed. But you can see now that it's actually brought the machine online and started the installation process. When you're done with your machine, you can just press Control C and that will tear the machine down and end the run for you. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at a full installation, what it would look like, and then at the end of it, we'd have a box file. So I'll see you in the next video.